welcome back to Miss Now Speaks. We're gonna learn sets today. So before we see the different operations on sets, I just do a very fast definition on sets. So if you read through the definition in the mathematics book, sets is actually a collection of things. So these things can be represented by different things like numbers, alphabets, or even categorical stuff. And for mathematical purpose, we usually use alphabets to represent a set. And this alphabet is usually in capital. So most of the time, we use set A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. And if you want to say that a particular thing is in a set, for example, X, Y, Z is in set A, you're going to say that this x is an element of set a and the symbol used for element will be this one here and if x is not an element of a all you need to do is put a slash across the element symbol and you're gonna have x is not element of a and what about subset subset symbol looks something like that it's an elongated c so if i say that b is a subset of a then whatever that is in b will actually be in a okay. now let's move on to an example so we let's see one example here we have a set a which is equals to one two three four and five not the curly bracket that is used to represent a particular set here you have the curly bracket for both the opening and the ending of a particular set so you do the same and we have set b so set b here has one three five and remember to close the bracket so i'm going to ask you a few true or false question Here's so all you need to do is just tell me is it true or false. So is 3 an element of A? So is it an element of A? Well, so let's look at set A here and see if actually 3 is in A. And yes, it is in, so therefore it is true. So it's pretty easy, right? So let's look at another question now. Question number 2. Also a question to find out whether it's an element or not. So this time let's see if a tree is an element of B. So is it an element of B? Look at number three. It, does it exist in set B? Yes, it does. Therefore, it is true also. And the next question, question number three. Is seven an element of A? So let's see if seven exists in A. Unfortunately, there is no seven in set A. Therefore, seven is not an element of A. So to answer the question, it is false. And moving on to question four. Is B a subset of A? So you remember, whatever that contains in B must contain in A. So B has one, A has one, B has three, A has three, and B has five, A has five. So yes, because whatever that B has, A has. Therefore, B is a subset of A and it is through. And one more last question. Question five is A is a subset of B. Now the other way around. It can be because B is really a subset of A. So A cannot be the subset of B. Okay, let's go on to example two. So we have P, which is A until J, and set Q, which are vowels. So if you can still remember what vowels are, that is A E I O U. Okay. So if I were to ask you question one, what is the set of q so because we already knew the answer earlier on therefore just write out the elements that contain in q and therefore q will be equals to a comma e comma i comma o comma u and close the curly bracket that is the answer for the first question
Okay, moving on to question two. Now we would like to know if Q is a subset of P. So let's look back at set Q. Set Q has A, P has A, set Q has E, P has E, set Q has I, and P has I. So, but Q has O and U as well, and P does not have. Therefore, the answer is no. Q is not a subset of P. So that's all for sets part one. Hope you have actually learned something and we're going to continue learning sets in part two. See you again. Bye bye.